Hi, good evening. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and today I'm taking you with me down a rabbit hole, and it's about abnormal embalmer's clots. I haven't spoken about it for probably a month. Normally, I keep you well aware of the changes in this because I think it's important. And quite truthfully, I ended up going down the rabbit hole around embalmer's clots because I wanted a scientific explanation. That's where they say curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought him back. So I am now trying to piece together this unusual pattern that embalmers had been noticing where they were discovering abnormal white clots. I've been talking about it for over a year now with different people and specifically credit to Tom Haviland about keeping the attention on this. But what really changed my perspective was when I had this conversation where embalmer's clots were occurring in the, live, in the living. This was a whistleblower from the US who stepped forward and said he couldn't stand to stay silent any longer. And he shared not just information about what it is that he was seeing, but he showed the pictures. And so for anyone who needs to understand if this is science fiction or just a conspiracy theory, you absolutely have to watch this video and the link is in the description below. It details what he's observing and it shows the clot. So if you are squeamish, please don't go and look at it because we, we were looking at clots in that, in that image. So I have to continue to talk about this because this individual risked his position in order to bring this to light. And so I feel as though I have a responsibility to continue to ask questions and to push this from a scientific point of view, because it can't be treated as a conspiracy if it is actually happening in living people. So even if people wanted to ignore the embalmers, you have a situation where it's also being noted in people who are alive, really unusual plots. So I'm going to be sharing some more information about this and a critical theory called the string theory by a Joe, a Joe Lee, a doctor who I thought, who I really think caught a very important point. I wish I'd thought of it myself. It was, I think, that good. So I'll share that with you in just a moment. Before we start, as usual, remember, click on the subscribe button. It should be a little bell on this area here of your video. Click on it and you can then subscribe. Please also remember to join our uh, Vision Med newsletter. We give you updated information, really interesting topics, broader than just COVID, trying to build a pattern here where we really keep you well educated as to the latest information that's out there. Critically, it is free. So please join us. Coming up as well in the next uh, little bit of 10 days as I'm working on this research, this important information about STORM, spike triggered autoimmune response mechanism. There is a webinar. I think truthfully all the free tickets are gone, but your support is much appreciated. Um, we'll be doing it next Thursday. If it's beyond that date, there will be a link where you should be able to look at this presentation. Very important uh, webinar that I'm going to bring a white paper out about it as well. And so remember, you must look at this video here as I have finished, when I finish talking about it. So let's get back to this disturbing question. Now, the reality is, why is the scientific community not talking about it? It's largely because there is an elephant in the room, and this is now a new elephant. And I, I saw this image, I thought it was brilliant, and this is what it looks like. Everybody is baffled. What is going on? We don't know, they say. But there is a huge elephant sitting right in front of us that nobody wants to address. And what we have to do from a scientific point of view is keep all options on the table. Don't ignore anything. Always go back to the basics of science. Try and understand what exactly is going on. 
So what I'll be sharing with you today is about an important piece of information. Now, as I said, people are continuing to look at this from the scientific perspective, and they're bringing answers to us that help us to understand this even better. So I haven't fully finished all the scientific analysis, but this really critical piece of information was sent to me where people actually are trying to analyze in the lab these clots. And what I have found so far is really interesting and concerning at the same time, because in black is largely the things that are normally in clots, but in red are the things that are not typically there. And so I'm going to have to go through all of these things sequentially to understand why these extra proteins are inside these very fibrous abnormal clots. So it will take some work to try and dissect it, but I want to let you know that there are people across the world looking at this from a scientific point of view, trying to see if they can get answers to what exactly is going on. I'm going to share with you now what I consider to be a really standout piece of um, information that was put across to me um, in terms of the um, in terms of this presentation. So I'm going to, to try and see if I can get to the point in this video where I can show it to you. And uh, let me just make sure that it's working. Um, the moment it isn't, but I'll come back to it. It's just really a, a point about what they call a string theory and why it is that this here could occur in the context of people after the pandemic. Now, the truth is we are asking about the elephant in the room and we have to address that question about the elephant in the room. So let me just see if I can get this video ready and I'll show it to you. As I said, this is from JJ Kui and jo uh, Dr. Lee that I think that um, really captures some very important information and um, as fate would have it, I can't seem to get it to play. Let me just explain to you it's essentially what he was saying. What he pointed out was that when he looked at what happens with the immune system and how the immune system works with antibodies targeting especially the spike protein, he has come up with a concept called the string theory. And the string theory is really about how you have a situation where you have the critical information occurring about the clots that are happening. Just hang on one second. Let me just see if this is working. I'll show it to you here. Okay, so the string theory. So when you get a COVID infection, you have spike on the virus you're going to form antibodies to the top, right? When you are given free spike, you're going to form antibodies to the top, to the bottom, to the side. The spike antigen has multiple antigenic sites. So now... It's even worse. I can't wait to add to this. Keep going. <clears throat> now you have a person who, have, who has an antibody to the bottom. And he has an antibody to the top. And you now you give them a booster three months later. You give them a booster. This is what happens. There's only three components. You have an antibody to the. Let me do it right. <laughs> an antibody to the. He's got an antibody top. magnet. I can't believe it. You have the spike now. The bottom is visible. The antibody sticks to that. But the oh, there's another arm. Here he you goes. See where I'm going with this? Here he goes. I see clotting. Oh my god, you saw it. <laughs> now I You're see really it already. Fast. Yeah, yeah. Now, the other arm, right? Now the top is visible, right? Now yes. the antibody is it going to stop? No, this is also what Sukrit Bhakti said. This is a disaster indeed. It's just a giant matrix of shit. So this is what I call the string theory. Yes. Because in a natural infection, you're not going to form antibodies to the bottom. And so even if it does form the bottom, you can't have 
one antibody binds to two virus particles because the virus is too big. But when the antigen is smaller, you can have the antigen act as glue to the slightly different antibodies because you're gonna have different populations of antibodies that form. Uh, now they may. This is fascinating stuff. Absolutely incredible concept that string theory and as i said when i when i saw it i thought to myself i've got to at some point talk to this guy because it, it's such a important concept when we think of how it is that we analyze what could be happening with these abnormal clots and taking you back to the um the critical information that was identified in the clots because if he is right then you should also be seeing immunoglobulins in the clots. And there you have it. When you actually look at the characteristic, you have immunoglobulin heavy chain gamma 2, and you have immunoglobulin heavy constant gamma 1. These are not typically part of a normal clot. And so there is no doubt that it seems that there is a pattern as to whether or not it's exactly the string theory is difficult to tell. But the point is, is that it's the logic, the scientific logic makes perfect sense. And when you analyze it and you look at the, um, the characteristics, it does add together. Why would these antibodies now be targeting it in that way? And I've, I've tried to put together my own diagram of it, and this was just a quick mock-up of it. And you can see here that this is supposed to be then the bottom part of the spike top part of the spike, it binds to an antibody here. And then the same thing happens. This antibody binds to the top part. And then you have this multiple connection occurring and more antibodies coming along. What's even more complex is that the epitopes on this, there are multiple epitopes. It's not just one and two. There are multiple points that this could in theory bind to then make these very abnormally patterned clots. Really, really important concept. And as I said, it seems to be breaking, it seems to be from a scientific point of view, that is also being seen. So these are really, really important points that we have to analyze. And I really appreciate the scientists who are doing this work. They're, they're quietly going about analyzing whatever they can find, trying to make sense of it, and what we need to do is talk more about this in a scientific way to break through the pattern that is being, as that, in a sense, that is suppressing it, the fact that people seem at the moment to still consider it a conspiracy. It's not actually real. I'm going to show you one more thing before I end. And so, again, if you are squeamish, please look away now, okay? Again, please look away now. I'm going to show you again what we're getting. People are quietly sending us this information because they think it's important. This is the kind of clot here that is being pulled out from patients. So this is not embalmer's clots. These are in living patients. And wherever you see the white, that's the kind of abnormal patterns that they are trying to, to assess because these don't break down even with fibrinolysis. So we have to work out what really is going on. Critical questions. How does it pattern in terms of where we are in the pandemic? Is it worse when there are infections, you know, surges? All of these questions need to be answered. And sadly, the regulatory scientific community is not interested in this. As far as they're concerned, it's not relevant. That, from a scientific point of view, makes no sense to me, especially when we know that thrombotic complications are still occurring in patients. Why wouldn't we want to learn? The only logical reason is because, as I said before, there is an elephant in the room that nobody wants to touch, and that is causing the scientific community to corner itself in a way that we we will destroy public confidence just because we refuse to ask the hard questions. So again, thank you very, very much for staying with me. I hope this information is valuable. I promise to keep this important story front and center because we still need the scientific answers 
and it is very relevant to disease presentation and management of disease. Have a great evening.